Hi and welcome. This is Trader Genius and I'm Jess and I'm joined here today with a wonderful human being, Margaret. She is a member of our Trader Genius community and she has been a day trader for quite some time now. She has uh, been through the ups. She's also been through the downs and has a lot of experience and wisdom to share with us. I really enjoyed our conversation with her and I know you will too. In our conversation, we discuss a little bit about her trading journey and where she's kind of evolved to, to be heading. We also talk about some of the risk considerations when looking at day trading options versus stock trading. We talk about the news and how it is not helpful in generating a system that produces consistent results. We also discuss the importance of entering into your trading environment with a rock solid trading mindset and how when that mindset is a little bit off that can lead to inconsistency. We also hit on a really important topic with the trade log and how keeping a trade log allows for self-reflection and continued growth as a trader. Enjoy, let's jump right in. What have you been noticing lately in the market? Uh, oh my gosh, it's been... so erratic. Yeah, um, and has that like affected your trading at all? Yeah, it's made me more cautious. Okay. Yeah, I've been the I've been the same way. Uh, it's been pretty interesting with the uh, Dow breaking out to all time highs very recently, but uh, prior to that, we were just kind of sitting there in a lot of chop. Um, the S and P five hundred was up to all time highs recently as well too, but prior to that, it was just kind of dancing around that three seventy five three eighty mark. So, with your trading, what what type of trading are you mainly uh, doing right now? Mostly I've done options, but I'm trying to study stock too. So, but okay. options. As far as the options go, or what kind of time frames are you are you looking at on the on the options? I do much better when I trade in the mornings and look okay. for that first window. Sometimes the you know second window nine forty five, but um, with the volume that goes in the mornings, my Catching, catching that wave or getting my chunk out of the middle, it's much easier for me in the mornings. Yeah, I've been noticing that lately there's been a lot of overnight trading and it's been created, that's what kind of seems to be where a lot of the volume is. And so in the morning, we're getting these nice short moments of volume and then it's anybody's guess after that. Yeah, did you see it this morning? I All did. the indexes were green. Everything looked great. And then I don't know the exact time, but man, it took the big red plunge minus a hundred. It's like, wow. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been with that erratic nature, it's good that you've been a little bit more conservative or, or cautious because of, because of stuff like that. And so when your options day trading, what, what kind are you trading short, you know, a few minute trades? Or are you holding in 15, 30 minutes or even throughout the day? Um, I do best when I hold for just a few seconds or minutes. Um, when I'm sitting and looking at that chart for more than, you know, a couple of minutes, it's never good. <laughs> so, <hear> you on that. <laughs> yeah, it's never good. That's where, you know, I'm hoping praying, whatever. No. Um, like I had a trade the other day that was, I think it was about, it was under 30 seconds. Maybe it was 30 seconds, but you know, it was a good trade. And then I've had trades where like, you know, we're talking about, you sit there and look at that chart and look at that chart and it's not going. So <laughs> yeah, it doesn't end up uh, sometimes panning out. I, I hear you. I, I like that shorter shorter trade window when we're talking options day trading uh emotionally i just i don't like to stay in those longer trades if i don't have to uh you know i can't really leave the computer you know even if it's a longer options trade for that day and i, I could always set you know a, a profit taker or a stop loss on it but it's just the back and forth that goes through in those micro kind of fluctuations throughout the day that just really uh the stress level is not something that I'm looking for. It's very stressful. And one of the other, I think it was Patrick in one of our, you know, 
uh, discussions on a Thursday said he really hated to put his money at risk. And that's kind of stuck with me that, you know, the more you've got, the longer time you've got your money out there, the more at risk you are. So shorter yeah, trade is better. That, that's a great point, especially when you're trading those smaller fluctuations like with day trading. Um, well, for example, um, I don't know if you've been looking at any of the marijuana stocks, but uh, one of the marijuana stocks just overnight and today was a high of something like $65. And by 45 minutes into the market, it dropped $20 in, in that time frame. And so it was, it's moving in some weird ways. That churns, you know, that makes my stomach churn. <laughs> Unless you're on the right side of that trade. Yeah, exactly. So how, how long have you been trading the uh, day trading options? Let's see. I have been, um, I think, a little more than three years. I found the um, Udemy courses online. And um, so it was working my way through that. And then I think it was three years ago that I started with uh, Trader Genius. Okay, cool. And was that your first exposure to the market? Did you come to day trading options and that's how you first kind of started trading or were you trading other ways and methods prior to coming? I had tried my hand at uh, day trading previously, probably about four, maybe five years before that. Um, and it was different, um, different program, of course, different setup. Um, and, you know, had a day where I lost a chunk of money and I was like, I shut that computer down and said, not for me, can't do it. So um, when I found this, it seemed like it was doable and that, you know, if I could get control of my emotions, then I could do it. And so yeah, yeah. I stuck with it. I hear you on the uh, emotional control and, and maybe we can get into that a little bit later. What, so for like my prop, my pathway was I started out longer term stock trading and went to shorter and shorter time frames over time. What attracted you originally to get started in the market day trading? Well, the um, like I say, I used a different program previously, and the guy who taught it was um, not a brainiac. You know, just somebody who had figured out how to do it. I mean, he was pretty average kind of Joe and um, made it seem like it was totally doable. And uh, so I, that's, that's when I tried my hand at it and, uh, and got burned. Not, not bad, but enough that, you know, I'd worked hard for my money and wasn't going to just fritter it away, I didn't think. So um and then studying the um, Udemy courses and the cornerstone um, method, it seemed really doable. And the tools have just gotten better. Yeah, it's awesome. So it made sense to you that that's interesting because my, you were influenced by somebody talking to, talking to somebody and, and, it, and it made sense and you had somebody that could help you kind of down that path initially. Uh, and so you started out on that shorter time frame. For me, I had somebody that, I knew that the longer time frame, the stock trading was what their focus was. And that's kind of where I started. So it's kind of interesting that um, you know, we kind of bump into these folks along the way and that kind of helps our, or necessarily influences our starting point with the stock market, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, so you came to day trading and what is it specifically about day trading that, that you like? What, what is it? What does it do for you compared to other types of trading? I think it's it's pretty immediate. You're either good or you're bad. And, um, you know, the days when I can follow the rules and stick with my rules and make a good trade and shut the computer down, then that's a good day. Get on and do something else. Um, and like I say, I'm starting to look at stocks and um see how that goes, that's not as immediate. That's not, you know, just 
done. So that's a different mindset. Yeah, it is a different mindset and trying to keep the perspective uh, for the type of trading that you're doing. And it's important that, that you recognize that. So that's awesome. Uh, with, with, with the uh, day trading, are you trend trading, cycle trading? It's kind of your preferred uh, style. Trend, trend trading. Trend trading. You know, look and see what the market's doing. Go with that. Find a stock that's going with the market. That kind of thing. Well, market's a powerful thing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it helps helps drive a lot of those trades and allows uh, allows a, a more of a risk managed strategy by by trend trading. Um, so with with the switching over to the stocks, what's what's got your eye kind of looking over at the stock side of the house? It, in some ways, stocks are a little less risky because um, you you put your money in. And unless it's just, you know, plummeting, like the uh, marijuana stock you're talking about this morning. But, you know, that thing will probably recover somewhat. Um, but at the end of the day, unless you're just terrible at it, you're probably going to have some amount of equity in the stocks. You might lose a few dollars, but the trade's not going to cost you a whole bunch. Um, so there's, in that regard, it seems a little less risky sometimes than options trading. There is some risk with options trading because it's so fast and you, know, you, can, you can lose something in a hurry, but you're also in and out of the market super fast, right. depending on how you choose to, to, to trade. But in, in your case, you know, you're in and out pretty quick. So your, your money's right. not left uh, for somebody to manipulate, essentially. Whereas with stock trading, it's a little bit more steady. Um, decisions can be made a little bit more. Uh, you can think, you have time to think. Yeah. You, you, you yeah. can process what you're seeing and, and sleep on it overnight. And there, there's a pretty good chance that it's not going to all be gone in the morning where with an options right. trade, uh, if you sleep on it overnight, it may be gone in the morning. Yeah. A lot of money can be gone by morning. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting perspective. And in managing risk, how do you see stock trade? Are you looking to, to put them both together and, and do both? Or are you looking for a switch? Or how do you kind of, what's your thoughts on putting those two pieces together? I probably won't leave option trading altogether because um, I enjoy that. But um, I would like to put the two together um, like you say, you know, you can look at stocks over the weekend, put your trades in uh, Monday morning and see how things are going, you know, check them every day, of course. But uh, if you want to get out by Friday, get out, get your money. Um, it, unless it's something that you think is going to, you know, continue. Um, so it's just, uh, it's expanding my skill set, kind of. I think that's really important. Uh, there's a ton of ways to skin the cat in the market. And once you kind of have something down and you're in maintenance mode with it, whether that's day trading options or stock trading or wherever somebody starts, being able to expand out and have another avenue so you're not reliant on one thing. And you know the whole, the saying, uh, don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That, that's at varying levels. You know, for a stock trader, they may say, well, I'm not going to put all my eggs in one basket and they have 12 stocks, but they're trading all 12 of those stocks the exact same way. So their eggs are all in one basket because they're only, say, stock trading on a weekly time frame. Being able to have that diversification across the market when you're ready to grow out to it is, right. is, is a really, really a good thing because... We know that not all market conditions are conducive to just day trading options or just stock trading. And you can really leverage or switch your focus to whatever the overall market conditions are supporting. So I, think that's a, I think that's a really cool uh, avenue. So with that being said, have you looked for, for stock trading um, 
are you looking at anything in particular as far as a uh, type of stock trading? Still looking more at trend trading for, for stocks? Probably trend trading. Haven't really nailed down uh, and probably could do some more research on, you know, what areas of the market are really trending up, that kind of thing. Um, but just going through, picking whatever my parameters are for, you know, what seems to be growing at a good clip. Yeah, so how, how do you go about doing that? What kind of is your process for the uh, picking those stocks? Do you have something that you're working on or is currently pretty set? I'm still exploring. So um, list that comes out in the afternoons after the market's closed, I like to look at that and see what's um, what's coming up and um, and watch those. Um, and then sometimes I'll pick the the list and start culling through, you know, picking different parameters for something that's growing. Uh, and looking at those charts for the daily, the weekly, the monthly, that kind of thing. That's awesome. So you're building out a, a systematic process that you're you're in the in the in the process of building out that system. Right. That's awesome. That's awesome. So with the uh, process building that you're doing, are you paying attention to the news? Like, how much does your environment outside of the tools that you're using? drive your decision making right now is well i know that the i mean in the last it seems like in the last couple of months things have been pretty volatile as far as um the market and certainly some stocks go um so i i keep an ear kind of cocked to the news but that doesn't drive what i'm doing when i'm on the computer um, so I don't know. I don't, I'm not really one of those who's checking, you know, CNBC or whatever it is every morning and, you know, listening to all that squawking. I'm not, I'm not that person. I mean, like right now, I know that with, uh, things that are going on in Washington, there are people who are just, you know, cued into that and it's driving some things. Um, over the overall market, so I kind of, kind of keep, like I said, keep an ear cocked to it. But I, I'm not just at it all the time. Yeah, it's like, uh, like kind of sounds a little bit like what I do, where it's just kind of this just general awareness that, that you're apprised of the overall atmosphere of what's going on in the world, but. You're not uh, you're not buying and selling based on uh, like when Trump was treat, uh, tweeting back back during his, his presidency or, or no. anything like that. No. To your I think it was I think it was Monday. I got a um, little um, blurb on my phone that said, "I think it was stocks are acting weird," and it was like stocks are always acting weird, you know. So why would that be news on this past Monday? Um, I, I can't even think where that came from. I mean, what, you know, news thing sent that out, but I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, th thanks, thanks, uh, Captain Obvious. I, I used yeah. to get a end-of-the-day news report, and the longer I read that news report, I realized they absolutely had no idea of what caused the market to go up or down. It was just general speculation based on some fundamental factor, but there was, there was no correlation. And I realized it never really actually helped my trading. So they'd say, Oh, market went down today because such and such, or market went up today because of such, such. And I'm like, why do I keep getting these things that are providing no value to actually what's happening right now? Whereas right. like with day trading and, and the tools you have, you know what's happening right now because the behavior is showing it to you and the indicators are real time. They're showing you that, hey, regardless of why 
the market went up or that particular stock went down or whatever, it's going down. The, the behavior is actually right there instead of the speculation behind the potential gloom and doom that we, <laughs> that yeah. we tend to get a lot on the news, you know? Um, I don't know, have you ever watched the news and asked yourself, what are they talking about that is actually real and not speculation? And uh, sometimes I've gone through a whole newscast realizing that there was, uh, there was nothing that actually was happening right now that, that mattered that they reported. It was either something happened yesterday or this potentially could happen in the future. Right. It yeah, it was an interesting challenge. So where, where do you see yourself going with trading? What's the, what's the plan? What's the goal kind of, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm going to, I mean, my plan is to stick with it and to get better at it and, um, and to um, follow my rules better. It's, it's a discipline thing. And, um, you know, when you can sit down and have your, or my head, you know, where it needs to be, as opposed to trigger happy and, oh, we're going to trade today. Well, we might not trade today if, you know, if we're being disciplined about it, not, I'm going to miss a million trades and that's okay. Um, so I just want to improve my discipline, uh, be more professional about it and continue to do it. Yeah, awesome. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about that mindset stuff. What is it that you find happens when you're not in a good trading mindset? Oh, that is just almost always a prescription for a disaster um, or a losing trade. Um, yeah, when I don't have my mindset right and when I sit down and um, – Oh, gonna trade today and trigger happy on that, you know, button on that mouse. It's that's that's not good. It's when I'm I'm calm. I've got you know it's kind of zen <laughs> that um, it's gonna happen if it's meant to happen today. And I'm sitting back and I'm not trigger happy and um, watching the charts and the indicators and, you know, start with that first power genius, you know, is that red or is it green? Okay. Now what does the rest and just proceed through the, I think Rob calls it a pre-flight check, you know, um, that you start there and then you work your way to what is the chart for the stock that I'm looking at? What does that look like? Um, when you got all those green lights, you're good to go. Um, but when I don't do that, it's, you know, it's almost assured that I'm going to lose. So being ready and being calm and in the, in the zone kind of deal. I mean, they're, you know, it's, it's just getting your head right. Yeah, it's super important. I mean, it affects my trading as well, too. What do you think kind of drives that that trigger happy? I used to have that experience and it really drove a lot of poor decision making. And for me, it was a almost like a, a it was two faced. Sometimes it was FOMO, I was fear of missing out on something. And so I jump in early, or it was greed just this idea of wanting to make money like i'm here to trade so that means i am going to trade not i am going to execute my process which may mean that i don't trade what kind of has been your experience with that trigger yeah I, I think both both of those have you know been been what's what i've done um i've gotten in trades early and watched them weeble wobble and then decided, okay, I need to get out of this trade. And, you know, 30 seconds later, whoo, there it goes. All right. But, you know, that's okay. Um, and then I've gotten in trades late and that that's never a good thing. Um, 
not, I can't say never, but almost never. Um, so yeah, it's the, oh, I'm going to trade and, and, uh, it's when, when I'm not disciplined about what I'm doing, it's almost always, uh, going to turn out not so happy. <laughs> so you know? do you have anything that you, that you do that's a part of that pre-flight checklist that helps mitigate some of that or what, what's some stuff that you found has worked for you? It's always better if I've got um, sort of an open morning as opposed to, hey, I've got this 10 o'clock thing I've got to be at or, you know, Zoom or do whatever. Um, if I've got a 10 o'clock anything, I need to just wait till later to, to trade because being in a hurry is never a good thing. Um, so it's kind of just knowing that there are certain days of the week that are open and are more open for my calendar than, than other days. And there are just some days that I should probably, and I have, you know, gotten where I'm not opening the accounts today. So the computer can just sit there. It, That's it, kind of what works best for me. Yeah. And what, what do you feel for, for me when I was working through that process, I felt like I should trade or almost this obligation to trade. And then I felt like I would, it would be a bad thing if I didn't trade. I would feel bad about it if I didn't. But ultimately for me, when I make those decisions to say not trade, at the end of the day, it's a good feeling. Exactly. Do you experience that as well too? Yeah. The days that I've known that my calendar was too full or that I didn't need to be trading that day, um, when I could just say at the end of the day that, you know, I hadn't opened the, the apps to look at the accounts and the stocks, it's almost been, it, I mean, that's kind of a growing uh, spurt that, you know, I did what I set out to do, which was not trade today. And even though a couple of times, probably during the afternoon, it was like, you could go do that. You could go, yeah, it's right there. Um, when I didn't do it, then it really, by the end of the evening, it was like, that felt good. And that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. And you get that level of control. So instead of feeling out of control, the end result is that controlled feeling that that you were in control of what it is you set out to do instead of letting it control you whether it be a, a sugar addiction or a, a netflix binge watching addiction or just not opening the the program uh, and you, you talked a little bit about the compressed trading idea uh, so you know for you only having a half hour that compresses your trading to where it creates this environment that, that leads to uh, unfavorable results, actions, which lead to the results. Uh, and I experienced that as well too, with trying to get the kids ready for school. And so if, if my wife is having a hard time with the kids and I'm hearing it, I've got this, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I need to go deal with this or go help. And oftentimes if I try and ignore that and still trade, that creates that feeling, that pressure, that compressed idea, and it affects the trading. Instead of just going, you know what? Today is not the day. <laughs> Family needs me. <laughs> right. That's right. That's your priority. And, you know, when you can get square on what is important to you, and trading is not the most important thing. I mean, it's, it's up there, but like you say, it's not, it's not the most important thing. It, it's a tool. Yeah, it's a tool that takes us to where we want to go. It's a, it's a vehicle to get somewhere, but sometimes there's pressing needs now. Right. And finding that balance of what can be mitigated 
what you're comfortable with, however you decide to rationalize it, whether you do trade or don't trade, balancing the needs of now, whether it be family or job or whatever it is, and where you're wanting to head. And right. That all gets balanced in those priorities. And if you're like me, lots of times I get in this push-pull fight because I think I can do it all. And so <laughs> I'll just pop in there for a minute or I'll just do this for a second and it'll be fine. And ultimately, uh, based on a trade log, it, it's pretty obvious that it's not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when you get in a trade in a hurry and you're working against the clock, what always happens to me is I have got to go. I have got to get in the car or, or on a Zoom meeting or whatever. And that is not the moment that I wanna get out of that trade, but I have to. And like I say, just never, just never works. Yeah, it doesn't pan out. And how have you been able to identify these things in your behavior uh, to improve as a trader and to continue to grow? Well, um, I used the travel, I mean travel, the trading journal. And um, like you say, if at the end of the, whatever time frame I've traded, um, whether it's get in in 30 seconds and slam that computer shut and do my journaling. Um, that always helps me see what's, what's working, what's not. Um, one of the things I do on the trade journal, I finally got to where, um, you know, I do all the essay remark, looking at what I've done, but also at the end of the, at the end of each trade, I grade, you know, was, was that an A plus? Was that a C? Whatever it was. And then at the end of the day, if I've done more than one trade, I grade myself on that day. Um, that's been pretty helpful too. That, that's just something that I do. And it's, that's been helpful to me. But looking at what trades work, what trades don't, why didn't it work? Where was my head? What was I trying to was I trying to get too much done that day or, you know, was I able to concentrate on what's in front of me on the screens, that kind of thing. You just hit yeah. on a, a lot of, uh, a lot of wisdom right there. And that's, that's doing that trade log consistently and being able to use that as a reflection tool to be able to grow as a trader is it's phenomenal. And the whole grading system, that's a, it's a great tool that could definitely work possibly for some other people as well too just to keep them on keep them on track and we're used to getting the grades and there's some deep-seated uh stuff there when you when you get an f you know <laughs> there, there's a difference that. <laughs> between an f and an a yeah uh, and we and we've all experienced that whether in trading or or in our own schooling <laughs> yeah and then being able to do that reflection and you hit on something really important. You're doing that reflection, not just about your trade, but your overall environment. So interruptions, um, did you have to be somewhere? Kind of all the other things that factor in life because at the end of the day, I don't, no matter how hard I've tried, I haven't been able to shut them all out when I trade. I, right. I think they're always going to exist. So it's about how we manage those in our environment, our trading environment just isn't us, the mouse and the computer with the data coming across it. <laughs> right. We, we have other elements in our life that, that affect uh, how we trade and the mindset that we have coming in. And that's what's so important about, I think we touched on two really big important things and that's the pre-flight checklist. Am I ready to trade? Is my environment set up in a way that's gonna allow me to be successful to not get trigger happy or have FOMO or greed, et cetera. And then, like you said, shut that computer and doing that trade log and reflecting on it instead of letting it go for months or years and have an account that, you know, dies by a thousand cuts from these, from these little losses and not really getting that growth that we're looking for as a trader. So that's, that's some really good stuff there, Margaret. Um, I'm excited to hear about you going to stock trading and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that develops. And if there's any way that I can be a help 
or any of the other uh, folks within the community, don't hesitate to reach out. It'd be, be really cool to talk with you some more about that. And I just wanted to thank you for, for coming on. Thank you.